wanted to show you another painting I did with my golden matte acrylics and I didn't do multiple layers for a lot of the areas so you can see kind of the transparency in the floor actually in a lot of areas this lamp the walls normally I would go over with like multiple coats but I was really limited with time and just was really wanting to kind of just get it good and chunked in fast. I did not sketch this out at all, like Zippo. I just, I literally started painting right here in the middle. So I used this sketch right here and in this sketch and in that painting up there, to me it's really important for that lamp to be going out to the top. This piece right here kind of reaches to the top, to the bottom. And in this sketch, I liked how the, the, the uh, chair was right here, where before I've been just put, I've been putting the wall in there. I know that's probably not important, but I liked how squished everything is in this sketch. It just feels like full and everything's kind of crammed in. But that didn't really happen when I was doing this painting. It was a little more spread out and it's probably because I didn't take time to sketch it. I wanted to just try starting here in the middle, getting this correct, and then just working out. And that's what I did. Using my sketch here as a reference and the painting up there and, and this sketch right here for color notes and things like that. And I wanted to show you one other thing that I did. I'm, I'm still feeling quite stunned that I did this. So I've got a new palette here. Look how gorgeous it is. With the scalloped edge. It is ceramic. And guys, I took this from a gorgeous tea set that I have. Gorgeous. That I inherited from my grandmother. It's one that she was going to paint on. She used to paint on pottery. And she had prepared it to paint and never got to it. It was like her next project before she passed away. And of course I have the tea set in my cabinet for safety, but I've just been thinking about using this tray in the studio. I don't know if I'm going to ruin it. There is a good chance. I think what's gonna happen though with this acrylic paint, I didn't wipe it off. I'm just gonna keep using the palette and using the palette. At some point it'll get thick and should just peel off. I couldn't decide if I wanted to use it for my watercolor or gouache or for this. I just chose this and I hope I haven't made a mistake. I just, I really love having a part of my grandmother in here in the studio. I think she'd be happy and fine with me using it. And I don't think there's a chance of it getting like dropped in here. It'll pretty much just like stay right here and I'll be super careful. It's just really nice. And then I've been setting like my paints around it like this. I'll have those open. And then I've been putting my water Thing right here and it's just worked really nice yeah so and it's so pretty right now it feels really special and i like the paint it's just a nice smooth like surface to paint on i don't know i'm wondering if my dad may cringe i hope not and actually be using it instead of it being hiding in the cabinet you know okay well i'm feeling better about not feeling like i ruined it because i think even if i wanted to set it up like this i think it looks gorgeous with the paint and it's very appropriate and I did, I thought that was fun too. <laughs> okay, I'm feeling better about it. Even though it will get like uglier with the more paint, but that's okay. Yeah, look how pretty. Oh my.
All right guys, I wanted to show you this before I filled it up with paintings. We bought a really thin sheet of metal. Grady said it's something like that you, for putting up in your attic, so I don't know. But I am loving how the lights are reflecting off of that. And we didn't do it where it goes all the way down because I'll have paintings, you know, I can like magnet, use the magnets there and they'll hang. So I think this is gonna be perfect. I can fill this whole area up and that's what I'm gonna go do right now. Thank you, Grady. We love you. Okay, well, I don't know if that's better or not. It's actually kind of creating quite a glare, which that could be a problem in the future. I don't know. It's really working well, so I can just put the magnets on like lower and then just scoot the thing up, which I really like. Right now I don't have it completely filled up, but I'm really liking it. It's not as dark either as I thought it was gonna be. It's nice and bright and reflective of light, which I really, really like. See, look how I can just slide it all the way to the top when I put the magnets a little further down. So that's nice. I don't have to get the big, big ladder out. Here's a little update on the inspiration wall. We did end up painting the metal. And look, I mean, it's just like, you can tell that's the, but it looks just like the wall. It really made a difference. The metal was really, really, really bugging me. I mean, see, look, you can't even tell. I'm super happy with it now, like way happier. We put like three or four coats on it and the magnets still magnetized. We got some supersonic magnets. They were like too strong, so that actually like helped. When we can get out and about a little better, we are going to do the metal. I'm gonna bring it down here because one of the things that I've liked about these magnets, especially painting on this paper, is that it kind of holds it flat. And I like that it helps it flatten out long term. And I'm not loving, like, see how that's kind of flopping? I would rather it be like against the wall, you know, kind of more to the wall there. So we're gonna add a piece there. And then, poor Grady, like, I've got big plans. I think we're going to add it all up here so I can put paintings that are on paper up there and maybe even like all of this. I don't know. I am kind of liking that this just stays clear, I think. I don't know. It would be nice to have more space. So that's to be determined and thankfully I have a little bit of time to think. And I may even, I mean, since I'm really just working on paper so much right now, like all those are old paintings. I haven't even shown you guys those. Okay, I put 50 million. So all these right here on this row are paper. I put 50 million tacks in the wall because I just like did it quickly so I didn't measure. And then I had to do two rows because yeah, I don't know. Anyways, it just, there are so many tacks and holes in this wall. So we may do another layer of like the metal up here. I just don't know yet. It's just a really easy solution, very inexpensive, but I definitely think I wanna do it up here and maybe I'll keep this wall clear because, okay, yes, I just remembered why we decided we're gonna keep this one clear. It's so much easier to get up here with a ladder or a step stool. And with this piece of furniture right here, it's kind of blocking it. So I, we may just kind of keep this clear. Maybe I'll just put framed work up there. I wanted to give you that update. Look how good that looks. Doesn't that look so much better? Maybe I'll insert like a before and after. It looks so much better. Thank you, Grady. He's in the other room and he can hear me singing, but thank you, Grady. We are so thankful, we love you so much, and you're always so helpful. I'm trying to think of some more words. Yeah, I really, I really, really, really appreciate your work and your help and your support. And I thank you in the future for when you have to fill in all these holes, 5,000 million holes of tax that I put in the wall. Thank you for that too in the future.
for this Christmas, I wanted to keep things like really simple, non-cluttery. I put hardly anything out. I just didn't want the house to feel cluttered because I wanted to be able to leave my Christmas stuff out for like, quite a while this year. I thought I want to put lights up everywhere and I want to make some handmade things that feel Christmassy. And so that's what I did. And I plan to just leave it up until spring is what I'm thinking, unless I get tired of it. I decided I wanted to do some like handmade kind of garland like things, I think is what you would call it. I don't really know what you call them. Basically the Christmas decorations this year, even though I really like them and I did stick with my plan of keeping things simple, it looks slightly like a mixture of a blind person and a child decorated the house. I mean, because of like where I wanted to put Christmas lights, we have um, like extension cords going everywhere. And it's just, it's a hot mess, but it's really pretty at night. And I have enjoyed some of the just kind of different touches. And then it'll be really fun next year when we get our new stuff, or not our new stuff, our old stuff back out that we haven't, you know, that we didn't use this year. I mean, nobody's coming over, and so I just wanted to keep it simple and yet still festive. And so that's what we did this year. painted on this door like years ago for Christmas. I'm hoping it's showing up and we just left it up because I loved it so much. I just did like Christmassy kind of things, berries and woodsy kind of things. And can you see this rabbit? I bet it's not showing up. But one year I painted on all of our windows like this and it was so fun because it didn't cover up the light but created just some festivity. But this one we left up and I love it. While I was going through 
some footage. I found some really old footage of something that, guys, this has nothing to do with art, but I wanted to tell you about it because it's so stinking funny. I was cracking up so bad when I found this old footage. Okay, here's the story. Several years ago, we were at my aunt's house for the yearly family gathering, and she's got a gorgeous cabin out in the country. It's like a log cabin. She decorates it gorgeous, but I was in the bathroom, right? I'm just sitting there on the toilet, and I this, there's this movement, like right here, kind of, because it's kind of a small bathroom, and there's this movement right here, kind of by my knee, and I look, and guys, there right by me is the scariest looking angel and she moved she was like moving she had like these scary doll eyes you know what i mean like the kind that you're like please do not leave me in the room with that doll it was that kind of angel and she did she, you could tell she was real old too because she didn't really i'm going to be doing some reenacting i better put my coffee down so she had and she held these two candles and she was like this but her eyes like locked on yours and don't look, it's like this. I'm, this is what you felt like she was saying. You're stuck on the toilet and I'm going to kill you. I'm going to slit your throat at any moment. I mean, it was so scary. I was trying to like finish up really fast. And I mean, I was like sweating. I get out of the bathroom and I'm like going around to everybody. I'm like, did y'all see that angel in the bathroom? And everybody's like, no. I was like, you've got to go into that bathroom. I was like, I'm not going back in there because that angel was so scary. But like that whole Christmas party, I could not go back in there. I had to go. I was like, do you have another bathroom I can use? Because <laughs> I cannot go in there with that thing. I feel like it wants to kill me. Anyways, several people went in there and they were like, yeah, that thing is kind of scary. But I was talking to my aunt about it. I was like, Mary Jean, why do you have the like Halloween scary, I'm going to slice your throat angel in the bathroom? And she was like, what are you talking about? I was like, what do you mean what I'm talking about? The one that's like this and holds the candles is like staring at you. And she was like, oh, that sweet thing. She was like, that was like my first Christmas decoration to buy when I was married. I don't know, something, she told me some what, sentimental story, but I was like, uh, you need to take that thing out of there. Like that thing is scary. She was like, I just don't see it. I don't know what you mean. And my aunt also says that it has been in there every year. I'm like, no, 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 no. That angel has not been in there every year because I would have noticed that because it is so stinging scary. But over the years, it's been so funny. Some people that have been like new to come over there or even their, my cousin's husband, he'd been there several years and he still didn't notice it. And he came out, he was like last year and he was like, heard him saying to somebody, have y'all seen that scary angel in there? Man, that thing is freaky. <laughs> I, was, I read over and was like, oh my gosh, I know, isn't that the scariest thing? Well, you are not going to believe that Christmas I had this giant, did I already tell y'all it was like three feet tall? I'm not very good with like height, but it came up to like my waist. That Christmas, I had this big gift from Grady. Okay, well, let's just cut my short story. Long story short, let's just cut to the chase. This is what he bought me. I'm going to insert the footage here. He searched high and low for the scary angel and he found it and he paid a premium price. I mean, I, afterwards I kept saying, I can't believe you paid that much for that. And he was like, the, your face, like it was so worth it. Okay. So I opened up this thing. She's in a plastic bag. And like you can see her face. So this one that Grady found blew my aunts out of the water with scariness. So it was in the same like family, but like her wing was like broken off and her hair was all, I mean, she looked like she'd crawled out of the grave. I'm not joking. Grady set it up for me and plugged it in. So she moved, she moves, but she would be like this. She's like moving and then she does this like, I mean, it did it. Grady had set it up on the mantle and turned the lights off and she was up there doing her thing. I was screaming bloody murder. All I could think about was, we're gonna have to go like drown this thing in the pond because I cannot have her in the house. Like she, I was like, Grady, I don't even know if I could put her up in the attic. She's so stinking scary because I think when you go out of town, I'm gonna be afraid she's gonna like show up in the bedroom. I don't know. Anyways, I got myself all worked up over it, but we have laughed so hard. 
over that angel. And then like the following years, we would take her to my dad's and like set her up and then like, oh, and have her there. And it, Cause everybody is like, she is freaky, especially with like her jerky motions. And then I think over a couple times we've used her for like white elephant, you know, that thing where you trade gifts or whatever. Anyways, but nobody wants her. Everybody's like, I'm not taking her home. <laughs> But I forgot about her. I guess she is in the attic. I wonder if we gave her to somebody. Maybe somebody else has her. It's a little scary to think she could be up there. Y'all probably could just think that I've lost my mind. But hopefully you can see by the footage that she is scary. We even named her Gloria, I think. I think I felt like I needed to give her a nice name. So maybe if she would kind of turn nice. <laughs> you know, and not be so mean. She would turn like to a nice angel. Instead of I want to kill you. Alright guys. I hope you have enjoyed this vlog. I hope it's giving you some laughs, maybe some inspiration, some ideas. Sorry about the random stories. If you're like, I thought I came here for art. Now I'm getting this like scary angel stories. Oh well. All right, guys, that's it of all this ridiculousness. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you again real soon.